There you go. Hit that one more time. I am, I am the, the number one determinant, number one determinant of, the of the success or failure. Or failure. Here we go. Of my, of my student. Hey, y'all, you have a strong summer. Kick some butt next year. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. That's the mindset. That's the attitude. Love you guys. And we are live. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to week number 129 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy, hosted by yours truly, Principal Cafele. Let me see who we got in the building today. We got my man, Michael Benton, out there in Cincinnati. You know, I was out there yesterday and the day before in Mount Healthy. I thought about you while I was there. You were in Toledo. I'm rocking Toledo, Michael. Toledo Tigers, Negro Leagues. Uh, let's see who we got on. Uh, in addition, we got Takesha High in the building. My man, Carlos Baggage, doing big work uh, down there in Alabama. We got uh, Rodney Richardson. Uh, just jump where we got Lily Lanier, Marsha Poe out there in San Diego, Laura Mayer, the queen. My wife is in the building. Kimberly Broughton Cafele. We got Arcella Austri, Dr. Roz Gaskins in the building. I just uh, booked her to come on here a little bit later, but Dr. Gaskins will be in the building. We got Vanessa Zeskin, James Wilburn, Scott Wiley. My man is here. Mrs. Yolanda Kinney is in the building. There's my man, Dr. Vincent Stallings, in the building. Kimberly George, Dr. Sheikha Houston is in the building. Tony McClenney, Terry Williams, my man, Principal Sean Hurt, Regina um, Humphrey, and Sean. I gotta, I gotta share your, your vid, man. I was so, I was so multitasking this morning. I forgot to hit the share button. I got you after I finish here, though. Um, where we at? Where we at? Principal retired. Principal Dot McKeever Jeter in the building. Melissa Jones Chuno, uh, host. Uh, I, I think it's Jose Santoro, Adrian uh, Guter, uh, Gutierrez. Oh man, Tammy Taylor, you got to change that title, man. I mean, you are principal. I get it, but but let me tell y'all, man, Tammy Taylor from Create and Educate with Dr. Sheikha Houston. She's now. Dr. Tammy Taylor. Dr. Tammy Taylor's in the building holding it down out there in Chester, South Carolina. So I know you, Principal Tammy Taylor, but you doctor right now, man. You worked hard for that degree. So you know I'm going to be calling you doctor now. If I ain't calling you Principal Taylor no more, you Dr. Taylor. You're going to make sure you get that money's worth. We got Asia Burnett in the building. She out here in Jersey, man. How you like this weather, Asia Burnett? It's getting cold. I got the warm joint on this morning. We got Eriketa Kelly in the building, Lysandra Brackens. We got Mona, Mona Lisa Anderson out there in South Carolina. We got Rella Hicks, Charlena Heidi, Daryl Johnson, Vanessa. I got that one. Facebook user. She told me who she is, too. I just don't remember the name, man. Give me your name again. We got Superintendent Peter Finch. I got to get you down. I got to get you booked too, uh, uh, Doc. I, I'll get to it. We got my man Josh Tovar, MPA Jaguars in the building. Hey, y'all, hit that share button when you come in, though. Hit that retweet button. Let them know we are here. We got Melina Valentine in the building. Man, she's been traveling all over the country. Just, just spreading the message out there, that message of hope. That's right, Shirley, Casey Washington, I see it now. Good morning to you. We got uh, what we got here. Ronald Pugh is in the building. I'm almost getting ready. Did I say Josh Tovar? Josh Tovar, I think I said MPA Jaguars. Man, I got jet lag, Josh. I've been flying and stuff. And then, you know, I, you know, I was in one of them hotels at Hampton Inn. You know, I'm a Hilton guy, so Hampton's under Hilton. 
and they got the floodlights outside the door. Like you, you could put the, the, the towel under the door, but the side where the lock is, you can't block that. So you got all that hallway light coming in. Then you got the microwave light. You got the fire alarm light. Man, I could sit up and read a book in the dark, man. So I, I haven't had any sleep since I left here. So I, last night I slept like a little baby. I know that. We who else we got here? Kelly Jones, um, Siobhan, Principal Siobhan Jackson's in the building. Daryl Johnson's in the building. Man, it's that time. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. Let them know I'm getting ready to start. So let me say formally to everybody now: Good morning, greetings, welcome to week 100. 29 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. And as I always say, I'm a, and I'm going to always say it, I don't know definitively about you, but I do know about me, but I think I know about you because you signed in this morning. But if I can just let you know, give you a hint, give you a tease, how I feel right now in real time, I'm on fire Woo! yeah that's how i'm feeling baby oh man i mean i've been tired this week but i don't let that just extinguish my flame never i got though i was in houston early in the week in, in region four man what a day it but it was 98 degrees outside i get to cincinnati it's like 60 high 50s and it's raining and i'm not dressed for that i'm like oh my god let me go back to houston right but then i said well it is what it is and i got it going man so 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 we here i'm feeling good let me let me go to my commentary real quick i wrote something here and i decided i'm not going to use it i, I want i want to go right from the heart on this one real quick hear me somebody hit that retweet button hit that share button let them know Cafe Lays is flaming. But, but you know, I got a guess. He bringing heat, too. So, but before I get to him, y'all, check this out. I spoke in Cincinnati yesterday and Thursday. School district called Mount Healthy. I've been working with them for this is the second year now. Long-term contract. Always a blessing. And, but, but I'm always there as a consultant. They asked me to come in to speak. And they asked me to speak on diversity, equity, and inclusion. I said, okay. Now, I get a little anxious when I'm invited to speak on that topic when I'm not in an environment that's predominantly African-American. Although the topic is for when I'm with a diverse audience, a white audience, whatever the case may be. But a lot of times there's tension in the room when I speak on those topics. So yesterday and Thursday... Man, shout out to Mount Healthy School District in Cincinnati. I would say maybe there were, I don't know, five African-Americans in the room, something like that. Not many. But you know something? We had an open, honest, truthful, in-depth conversation on race, culture, diversity equity, inclusion, and all that tension and hostility wasn't in the room on this one. Folks was just like, yo, let's dive deep. Let's have this conversation because the student body is predominantly black. So let's have this honest conversation. And I just felt like after Thursday, that was the first day I felt, I felt good. So then I came back yesterday, Friday, and we continued the conversation, and I just felt good that we could have that conversation without that tension in the room and that hostility in the room and someone throwing shade subtly at me, you know, or some little subtle insult, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff that goes on in my world. It was just a good, honest conversation. It was a couple of tears shed, you know, that type of thing. And that's that's the first step to get to where we want to be as it relates to that topic. That's the first step, having that dialogue. Put down your defense mechanisms. Let's just talk. 
even if we don't agree, let's just talk. Let's let's just have a conversation and see where that goes as opposed to we defensive before we even get to it. So, again, shout out to Mount Healthy School District in Cincinnati for such a great conversation. I'm looking forward to coming back soon and continuing the work. With that said, to the first timers, we always got first timers. Welcome to you. Week 129. Now you got to go to YouTube, to the virtual AP Leadership Academy uh, YouTube channel and binge watch the 128 sessions that you missed, right? So make sure you watch as many as you can. Um, I'm wearing my Toledo Tigers jersey today. This is um, another Negro League team. I got about 55 of these things, man. I was telling Mount Healthy yesterday when I put them on, I feel like Superman because such just, just such prominent players played in the Negro Leagues. And, and the rep their jerseys, the authentic joints made of flannel. You know, I just feel, feel you know, this this ain't the this ain't the mesh that the play the major leagues wear. This flannel, man. Like I don't know how they wore this in the summertime. Those, those especially in those southern states, flannel jersey, pants, hat. I I turn when when I do these broadcasts on Saturdays, I turn the heat in my house off. It's off because this thing is the heat. Right? It's this it's flannel. It's heavy. Right. So uh, so to wear these in 100 degree temperatures, it's, I just I just don't understand. But anyway, real quick, before I go to my guests, you know, I got to do this always. man. Here's the book that accompanies the broadcast, the assistant principal 50. Get yourself a copy if you don't have it yet. This 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 book has been doing phenomenally well since I wrote it. Get yourself a copy. The book that accompanies it, the aspiring principal 50. If you don't have this. Get yourself a copy. Go to your go to your other device right in front of you and just go ahead and order it now. And then my newest joint, the Equity and Social Justice Education 50, came out last year. It's still here. Get your hands on it. This is what we discuss when we talk about diversity, equity, inclusion. Everything is coming out of this book, right? So uh, get yourself a copy. And uh, and that's going to take care of that self-promotion. You know, um, hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. I got a big time guest on this morning, man. You know, I bring in heavyweights, man. I go, you know, I, I you know, I, I look up my list of all of my colleagues out here because I know who's out here. You know, one thing about being a speaker or one thing about doing anything you do, you got to know not only your, your craft, but you got to know your industry. See, I, I, I know my craft as a leader. I know my craft as a teacher. I know my craft as a speaker, but I also know my industry. I know who's out there. I, I, I promise you, people telling me, you know me. Yeah, I know you because you you emerged on the scene and I know my I know my industry. Right. So I said, man, I, I got to get I got to get Dr. Joe Sanfilippo on here, man, because he's doing big things. So finally, I reached out to him. He said, yo, let's go. So I got let me bring my guest up, man. I got the good doctor. I got I got Dr. Joe Sanfilippo up there in Wisconsin. It was snowing up there yesterday, man. I Man, I don't even want to don't don't invite me there yet, y'all. Like, 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 you know, it's no, nah, I'm just kidding. But it, it's it, it gets cold up there, man. But hey, 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 Doc, I'm glad to see you. How you doing this morning? Hit, hit, take take yourself off that mute. There you go. Hey. All right. So so before we even get started, can I tell you that I we gotta do something about the about your intro after the after the lead-in. And I'm going to tell you why. I love it, but I'm just going to tell you when you played the first part and you were talking to the crowd, I was, I'm in a car, man. I was just going to break through the window. I was like, let's go. Let's go. We got this. I was so, I, I, I was so pumped, man. It was so great. So I, uh, I am so honored to be here today. And I am, I am coming to you from a car in Northwest Wisconsin. We can talk about how we got here in a little bit, but it is an honor to be with you. It is an honor to watch you do your work. Honestly, we've, we've only been able to connect in a couple spots and it's always in passing because all right. we're all going to a session and uh, in, in terms of, of uh, you know, what's next. So I can't wait to just sit down, break bread at some point. I really can't. I can't yeah. wait to have the Absolutely. conversation. I hope it starts today. So thanks so much for having me today. I appreciate you. And you know what you, what you said about that intro. Let me say this to you. Let me let me holler at my mother real quick because she's watching. My mother is 87. My mother has not missed not one of these broadcasts. But my mother hates that clip. 
she because she because she thinks she thinks I'm gonna do harm to myself physically <laughs> by the way I'm yelling like that. And what what she doesn't know is that after the pandemic, I stopped having the audience participation. So now I do it. It's just me. So yeah. it's it's a lot more energy into it now that I'm not waiting for them to respond. It's just me going hard. I am <laughs> the number one determinant. And my mother's like, no, no, I can't watch that, right? <laughs> Man, I'm listening to it going, yes, I am. Yes, let's go. We got this. <laughs> hey, let me tell the folks out here, I know it's a lot of folks out here that know your work because, you know, people I was telling people, oh, you got Joe coming on. I'll, I'll be on there. But then the ones that may not know, let me let me let me let them know who you are. Dr. Joe Sanfilippo is the superintendent of the Fall Creek School District in Fall Creek, Wisconsin. The Fall Creek School District was named an innovative district in 2016 and 17 by the International Center for Leadership and Education. Joe holds a BA in elementary and early childhood education, an MS in educational psychology, and an MS in educational leadership, and a PhD in leadership, learning, and service. Joe has authored multiple books, including the best-selling Hacking Leadership. And when, and when it says best-selling, I mean, that, that's a book that pretty much everybody's got in their hands in leadership. So Hacking Leadership, you may have known the name and didn't know the, know the author. And here he is right here. That's a very extremely popular book. Um, Ten Ways Great Leaders Inspire Learning that Teachers, Students, and Parents Love. And his latest, Lead from Where You Are, Building Intention, Connection, and Direction in Our Schools. Actually, he's got a newer one out, but when this was written, that was it. He was selected as one of 117 Future Ready Superintendents in 2014 and one of 50 superintendents as a personalized learning leader by the U.S. Department of Education in 2016. Education Dive named Joe their National Superintendent of the Year in 2019. So here we're talking about a gentleman who rose through the ranks, teacher, assistant principal, I think actually counselor, counselor. and um, principal, and now superintendent and, and speaker, world, um, world renowned. So let's jump. In. Yeah, no, they know you all over the place. I told you, I, I, I know, I know this industry, right? Yeah, right. So a lot of folks that I know that they don't even know I know them. I study. Them. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> what that. I, what I do, you, I mean, let's look at. You, I mean, I could talk about Aaron Rodgers because I know that. Don't. Not, right not, not, not right now. Not right now. Not today, man. Not today. <laughs> so here. I will tell you, I will tell you this. I listened to Charles Barkley last year said out loud, he said something like, Aaron Rodgers is the prettiest girl in the room that needs to be told every day that she's the prettiest girl in the room. And I'm like, yes. And why wouldn't you tell her that? You know, you yeah. you said the queen is here, right? You told you said the queen. I'm gonna tell Aaron Rodgers every day that he's the best quarterback in the National Football League, so he stays because without him. We got no shot right now. Yeah. So if you yeah. want to tell the prettiest girl in the room she's the prettiest girl in the room every day, you better do it. Do it. Yeah. Well, if he if 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 he didn't bring that diva quality, Devonte Adams would still be there. I don't know. That's he, a whole other he conversation. Might be frustrated too, as we saw. Yeah, this yeah that's true. You watch those. <laughs> you got to watch those. You got to watch those hallways. You got to watch those coming in and out of the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, for the non-football fans out there, let me get back to where we were. Right. Hey, 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 Dr. San Filippo, and I'm gonna call you Joe and Doc. And Please Tim, call me Joe. Yes, I always do. Who is Dr. Joe San Filippo as an educator? Who are you? Man, that's a that's a geez, just start with a hard hitter, man. I'll tell you, I like I'm I'm out here just trying to to do the best I can to amplify the voices of great things that are happening. And I think one of the things that we've been really heavily involved in in terms of being in Fall Creek, Wisconsin and all, all the stuff that goes along with it is how do we make sure that everybody in the world knows about the great things happening between in the walls of these schools? Because my biggest problem with schools today has nothing to do with schools. It has everything to do with people thinking they know what happens in schools. And when they think they know what happens in schools and they talk about what they think happens in schools and that's not what happens in schools. So when people don't know what you do, they make up what you do and then they become that becomes the narrative of who we are. And so I have honestly, from the jump, 
the thing that I wanted to do was make sure that every person that was doing great things in the organization that I was in, regardless of my position, that somebody else outside of the space knew about the great things that were happening. And if we can just start there, we can create some momentum for the work that happened. So I just want to, I'm just trying to, for me, I want to give people an opportunity and hopefully in the work that we do, if I can help in any way, amplify a voice, amplify an opportunity for the people in our organization, whatever organization that is, then I'm going to feel better going home in this work that's really, really difficult. I love what you said, and I, I want to stay there for a second. If you could help in any way, uh, help someone to or help to amplify a voice, amplify an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That sounds so basic, but yet so profound at the same time. Because right. you, you, you got young people in the school, you got adults in the school whose voices may not be amplified. There's substance there, but the voice may not be amplified. And here's you that said, if I can just help to amplify a voice or an opportunity, mm -hmm. man, that, that, I mean, yeah. that, that sounds like the place to be. Well, I'll tell you, we, when I had my superintendent interview in Fall Creek, it was, I was the fifth superintendent in six years. OK, so when I walked into the interview room that day, the uh, I asked them, how would I know if I'm going to be successful at the end of the first year? Tell me, how, how am I going to be successful? How what's the metric? What am I going to know? Because I want to know how I can how I can how I can be successful. Right. And one of the board members in the middle of the interview kind of looked around because nobody was talking. She, and she said, We've got a lot of really great things happening in Fall Creek, Wisconsin, but nobody knows about them. And I said to her, I might not be the best superintendent that you're going to hire, but I am the loudest person on earth. If there are great things happening here, I can promise you that everybody is going to know them. And we started from day one. What can we do to amplify voices? We are the home of the Fall Creek Crickets, man. We have a unique mascot, the Crickets of Fall Creek. We can make that. We can put that stuff. We started putting Go Crickets on everything, getting it out, making sure that we were branding A, but it, the brand came with a message, that the brand came with an identity, and that we could tell these stories, and they all you know, you know, know, revolved around the great things that were happening. And if we could get people to that medium, Whatever medium it was, if we could get them there and they could see the great things that were happening inside of the school, then they're not going to talk about the things that happened to them 25 years ago that they're still jacked up about. Right. Eighty percent of the voting public don't have kids in school. So if 80 percent of the voting public don't have kids in school, then 80 percent of the voting public are making a judgment about people in your building based on what happened to them when they were in school. And those people weren't even in the building at that time. Yeah. But they're going to make a judgment about your whole staff based on what happened to them 25 years ago. And that's not fair, but it's real. So what can we do as the leader to make sure that every single story that happens in the, in the school has the opportunity to be told outside of the school because that changes the narrative of what we do. What can we do to ensure that every single story inside of the school is told outside? Let me, let me holler at this audience real quick, Joe. Hey, mm -hmm. somebody that's on the call right now, who's writing and telling your story? Is it you? Is it internal relative to your staff? Or is the outside world telling your story and perhaps telling your story inaccurately. Yes. You got to control that narrative. 100%. And that's what Joe was talking about. 100%. Everybody in America yeah. knows what go crickets mean. <laughs> yes. Because he uses it everywhere. everywhere. Go, Josh Tovar is on this call right now writing go crickets on the topic. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, you know, it's here's the thing. We talk about the idea of being simple, unique, and repeatable. Okay. When you start talking about story and bringing it back, can you bring, can you be, can you be in a spot where you create something that's simple, unique, and repeatable? Go crickets is simple. It's unique. It's repeatable. And I force the engagement. We force the engagement every time, you know, we, we'll get into some of the, the, like the walk videos and the, and the book and stuff. If you watch the walk to work videos, the one minute walk to work videos, what people started to notice is in the minute and a half that I walk from my house to school, talk about leadership. There's also six fall Creek drops in every single one of those videos. I walk past my car. That's got a go crickets license plate. I say 
Fall Creek, Wisconsin. I walk past my door. It's got a Fall Creek sign. I go past my fence. It's got a Go Cricket sign on it. There's a door that I could walk in, but if I walk around the corner to get to the school, there's another sign that's five. And then I always say Go Crickets on my way out. Six drops in a minute and a half. I don't want anybody to ever forget where we are, who, you know, what, you know, where I am at that particular spot, because I don't want them to forget about the great things that are happening in Fall Creek, Wisconsin. That's powerful. That's powerful. And, and, and you know something I, 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 I got to I got to share what I just put on the screen. You can are you able to see the, the I am. Movie? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, this, this is a principle right here where I am in Jersey City. Okay. And, 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 and I mean, you talk about a powerful principle. He says, since I, since I heard Dr. San Filippo at a conference, I was challenged to change the public perception of Lincoln high school. I don't want the public writing their own narrative. Yeah. I, the reason I wanted to emphasize him is because I just posted a video this morning of him rapping on the stage to the students and the student, yeah. the call and response going on. And, 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 and just to hear him say, that you in, inspired him, man. That's big time, at Gastro. That's, right. that's, that's, that's big time. That's big Good time. Congratulations, Chris. Yeah, yeah, big time. Hey, hey, Joe. So when we think about education, mm-hmm. why, why? You know, you, you, you obviously very intelligent man. You could have done a lot of things with your life. Yeah. <laughs> why choose education? And with you have been doing it for so long, what continues to fuel your passion for this work? So let's do this. Let's do, let me do the last one first. So the last one, why do, why do I continue to be fueled in this spot? And, and I love speaking. I love every part of it, but I also love being part of the school district. And the, and the reason is this, there are still people in the world that don't know the Fall Creek Crickets. And until they do, yeah. until they do, I'm going to shout as loud as I possibly can, because we have incredible people. We have unbelievable teachers. We have unbelievable staff members. Our kids are doing Un- just amazing things daily. But here's the thing. So are other schools. And I think if we can create some momentum for our school and we are a K-12 district, kindergarten kids, 12th grade kids, all under one roof, 825 kids in a village of 1300 people. Okay. There is no reason that I should be talking to you today. And the only reason that I am is that we shout about the things that we're doing. And that can happen anywhere. If it can happen in a district of 835 kids, in in a village of 1,300, it can happen anywhere in the world. So I think that's the big piece is why I continue to do it. So why do you start? And I think we started, you know, my, my story isn't a lot different than a lot of stories in that you have people that trust you. You have teachers that believe in you. You have somebody that tells you when you're, when you're coaching, when you're a junior in high school and you're coaching a summer school basketball camp and they see you interact with three, with, with, with five, six and seven year olds as you're doing drills with them. And they see not only how the kids respond to you, but and I get a little emotional, but man, I, I've never told this story before. They see not only how the kids respond to you, but they see how you respond to the kids mm. and that changes them. And it changes how they talk to you because they know how you react and they know what happens with you. And they want to give that to you because they're a great teacher. And Tom Nysis was that guy for me. And he told me as a junior in high school, you have to work with elementary kids. Look at you. And not only look at how they responded to you. He said, Joe, look at how you're feeling right now. Look at how you're feeling right now. How do you feel? I feel great, coach. I feel great. Wouldn't you want to feel like this every day? I do. I do want to feel like this every day. And I did. And I still do. I mean, there's obviously stuff that happens that isn't awesome. But I feel like that when I see kids and I see them do things that they never thought possible. And I see teachers in a hallway having a tough conversation, but in a way that makes the kid feel valued. When I see that stuff, I'm like, yes, this is where I want to be. When I can walk into a kindergarten, four-year-old kindergarten classroom and sit there and just have a snack with a kid. And he can he can make his cookies disappear in the milk and then look at me like he just split the atom. Mm. And I can sit there and laugh with him for a second. And then he goes and tells somebody about that. That's why we're here, man. That's why we do it. And if you can bring that, the problem that we have in leadership is we get far too far away or too far removed from that moment, that cookie in the milk moment 
that we start to wonder why we do what we do. And if we as the leader can always remember why we do what we do by connecting in that capacity, all of a sudden we change the conversation about not only the school, but for how we lead the school. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's hearing what you just said about the cookie and the child mm -hmm. and having read portions of your book which I want to put on the screen right quick. Lead from where you are, right? You can get that right now on the other device, right? Yeah, yeah, right. But but what you what what I know that the that the person who hasn't read the book doesn't know is that you are addressing recognize, mm -hmm. acknowledge, mm -hmm. extend. And I'm going to get yeah. into that extensively with you later on, but I you know, but but I wanted to throw those three words in the in, in the atmosphere. Recognize. Yeah acknowledge extend you know lastly in these intro questions because i'm only in the intro man <laughs> i'm like luther vandross used to say when he was alive he, he said he, he would he would say to the to the to the to the fans in the in the arena i'm going to take my time singing these love songs that's what i do every week man i just take my time singing these love songs man because that's what it is we talking love Right here and now, baby. Here and now. This is what we're talking about. Here, here and now. now. Oh, I'm, I'm, don't get me started now. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Here and now. <laughs> you didn't think that was coming from me. I, you didn't, know, I, you didn't I, think that was coming I, from me. I got you. Ball, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Joe, you know, real quick, the um before you became superintendent, you were principal. And as I ask everybody that comes on here that was a principal, I want to ask you the same thing. Um, what what made you want to be a principal of a school? And what was it that you felt being a principal that you could accomplish that you could not accomplish as a classroom teacher or a counselor? Right. That's a great question. And I think every time that I, that I changed the position, I think I was always looking for where the next level of influence could lie. When I was teaching, I loved being able to connect with the 20 kids that were in my classroom. I loved connecting with the 20 parents that were in my classroom. I loved having a little bit of an impact on the other 40 that were into the other two classes across the way. I love that part. And I kept thinking to myself, is there a way to try to, you know, to, to, to do something a little bit more to connect with a couple more people? So in being the counselor, I got a chance to connect with all the kids and connect, you know, and one-on-one -on -one in the conversations. And I loved it. And I loved going into classrooms and I love doing team building games. And I love making these kids or helping these kids, not making, helping these kids to believe in themselves and really kind of think about what reflection looks like and how they can treat each other and that kind of thing. When the principalship came up, it was a really interesting thing for me because my wife and I were living uh, right outside of Green Bay. And my wife had, had uh, gone to college about three hours away on the other side of the state. And so there was a principal opening that came up in a district in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And um, and I was not at all qualified for this position. I was uh, I had been I taught for eight years. I was a counselor uh, for three years. I was not at all prepared. I mean, you know, on paper, ready for this position at all. And I had just finished my degree. And um, and I and I kind of like uh, I knew she wanted to get back to this side of the state. And so I thought, okay, so there's an opening. Why don't we just throw a flyer out and see what happens? And so we did. And I kind of got into this, it, you know, you know, you, you know, you know, if you're on a stage or if you're in front of a group of people, sometimes it just clicks, right? It just clicks. Like you get the question, the answer flows. Like you got everybody engaged, you know, from word one that they're coming with you the whole time. And I kind of got on that role. And okay. so I got the position. So when I got there, the reason that I wanted to do it, honestly, was to try to get her closer to that side of the state. When I was a principal, we'll be a principal whenever I was principal. But this thing came up. And when I got there, I thought, look at the opportunity that we can have for not only for 20 kids or 40 kids or, or 150 kids in a building. But now I can help with the with not only the you know every grade level and every teacher and every community member in that space. So we just started trying to, you know, expand the amount of influence that we had. And, um, and then I got momentum, you know, when I got momentum and I felt like it was working and I felt like people were into it now that made me want to do a little bit more and a little bit more. I think people who are valued always do more than, than they're, than they're asked. And when I started feeling valued in that position, I could see people moving and feeling value for themselves. Then I wanted to do more of that because as soon as you see somebody feel value in a way that's genuine, authentic, and and genuine and authentic, they're going to want to do more than what their job description allows. So I think that's kind of how the whole process will uh, look for me. Yeah, and you know what I'm what I'm hearing. I'm 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 hearing serving serving the people mm -hmm. that you lead. Absolutely. 
you know, that's it. I mean, it's coming. It's, it's coming through servant leadership. It's coming through yeah. loud and clear. Right. Yeah. Let's, let's, well, you let's, know, and I, my, my, my doctor degree is in leadership, learning and service. And, and I picked that very intentionally leadership, learning and service. And, uh, and it was a great program because it concentrated not only on your leadership and your own learning, but how are you serving? What is this? What does servant leadership really mean to you? And what does it look like? Not just what is it? How do you read it? But what does it look like? And I think that was really cool. Yeah, it, it, it is. And, 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 you know, when, when you are that servant leader, mm -hmm. You feel good about it. Too. Yeah. You know, I, I can't tell you the, the volume of people who ask me why I, I, I put out so much content without looking to be paid for it. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm, I'm trying to serve the public, man. Mm -hmm. I'm trying I'm trying to help the children that I will never meet. Right. You know, through oh, through yeah. adults, you know, or, or the or the videos that I do for the children, you know, and it's you know, you 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 feel a sense of of, of accomplishment and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. When you when 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 you're all about other people as opposed to being about yourself, mm -hmm. good stuff. You know the, the title of of this book, mm -hmm. "Lead from Where You Are" by you. Um, it, it it caught my attention in a big way. Um, what it, what exactly does that mean when you say "lead from where you are"? Well, I, the first thing that it means for me is that everybody has the opportunity to lead, regardless if you're leading two people, 200 people, 2000 people, if you're leading in the classroom, if you're leading on the playground, if you're leading, you know, in a building, if you're leading in a district, everybody leads in some capacity. Now, let's be honest, not everybody leads well or leads positively or leads people in the right direction, but they lead. Right. So how if you know you're going to have an impact from where you are, whatever position that you sit in, wherever you're at, you, you have leadership aptitude. So how are you taking that and not only creating opportunities for the people that you serve? Again, if it's one or two in a classroom or if it's 5,000 in a district, what are you doing to make sure that you're providing opportunities for them to do their best work wherever their, their best work takes place? And if we can do that from a leadership lens, whatever it is, if we're the leader in a space, regardless of number of people that you lead, if you're in that mentality where you're trying to provide the best opportunity for the people that you serve, that you serve, right? Now you treat that conversation a little bit differently. And I just tried to, in the book, figure out ways that people could like logistically lead from where they were and, and intentionally lead from where they were, because it gets into this life. We could do the whole, like all kids can learn thing, right? Like you can come and yell at me and say, all kids can learn. They can all learn. That's great. But tell me how. Like, yeah. give me something, give yeah. me something that when I walk in the room tomorrow and nine people are at my office waiting for me to talk to me about something that they're upset about, how am I still going to lead in that moment? And that's kind of what we try to think about when it comes to lead from where you are, because everybody leads. It's just, do they lead well? Do they lead positively? Okay. Yeah. And how can we help them move everybody forward in terms of where, where we want to go? So you got all these different capacities of people in mm -hmm. a building. And, and I think about, you know, when, when, I, when I looked at the title, Lead From Where You Are, I thought about a lot of the non-certificated staff members. Mm -hmm. I, I thought about the security. And although they have a job description, a title and description, I thought about what they do beyond that. And they're mm -hmm. leaders. I thought about yeah. the custodian. Absolutely. And they're leaders. I thought about Absolutely. the kitchen workers, the cafeteria workers. They're leaders leading from where they are. You know, so, so 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 the cafeteria work, I would say, when you hand them that tray, hand them a word along mm -hmm. with it. And they're leading. So now you got leadership with you and all those capacities. But, you know, in, in the book, as you, you broke it up into these sections, and one of the sections is called The What. Mm -hmm. And and that jumped out at me. I want you to talk to me about that. But let me, let me give you this context. We talk about the why a lot, the purpose. Right. So we'll say, what's your why? Or my why is blah, blah, blah. And I guess over time, with just my experience with life, I said that what and that why? I said they're not interchangeable. But sometimes when I hear someone talking about the why, I think they really mean the what. Let me give you an mm -hmm. example. I'm going to turn it to you. Okay. This platform, the Virtual AP Leadership Academy, I could say my why was to develop this, but I, I feel better by saying 
this platform is my what. In other words, it's it, it, it was a mission of mine to provide a platform for effective assistant principal leadership or aspiring assistant principals. That was my what. My why, on the other hand, was I saw some ineffective, bad, poor assistant principal leadership. So I wanted to change that. But the what was the fact that I wanted to create a platform in order to do it. So, so, so with that said, I want to, I'm, I'm curious to hear from you when, when, when you say the, what, what are you saying? Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I can explain any better than you did to be really honest, because the why is like, what brings you back? The, the why is, you know, why are you here? Why are you doing what you do? But the, what is, how do you get that accomplished? And I think the, you know, why you, you talked about, it, you see a void and you want to create this, what that goes along with it. I think the book is broken down into why, what, and how. Right. Yeah. So the why is what drives you? The what is how you going to the what is like the, the, the platform or, or the, the logistics of it and how is how you're going to move it forward. And for me, the what comes back to how can what am I doing to help you? What the, you know, what's the platform? What's the conversation? What's the tactic? What's the logistical piece of it? What's the scheduling? Whatever. You know, that's the what based on why we come to work every day. Like, I think that's a big piece of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And and then so I want to make it clear to the audience that the people, the people who are watching and the people who will see it on video later on, that your what and your why are crucial. Mm -hmm. But you got to make sure you have both. <laughs> and there's a lot of folks that I have the conversation. Well, what is your what? And of course, I have to explain that one. And then subsequently, why is that? Why does that matter? Which mm -hmm. becomes your why. And I, I meet a lot of people, Joe, who struggle with that question, mm -hmm. right? Because they're not necessarily thinking about the what, about the why, and even the where, right? right. Where, where right. you going to be yeah. as a result of this work. So, yeah. so how do you perform? And, and let me throw this at you. How does one perform at optimal levels when they are devoid of a what, a why? and aware they can't well they can't i i think that i think that there's always a ceiling on it if you don't have it like you'll always reach a you'll, you'll always hit a ceiling on some level if you can't connect those and I, that, so here's how i equate it right like the idea that you know when i was a teacher i used to have all the inspirational stuff in my office right in my classroom i had every poster you could buy Everyone, you know, the, the iceberg poster that's got the iceberg above that you can see and the stuff that's underneath it, right? That all the stuff you don't see. I had the cat poster hangs on the wall, tells the kid to hang in there. And what I what I realized was that the cat poster that hangs on the wall that tells the kid to hang in there doesn't make the kid hang in there. You do as the, as the leader in the space. When they look into your eyes, they're going to know if they belong in that room. Because supposed to be in that room and belonging in that room are two different things. Yeah. And that's the what. Like, what are we doing to make sure that they feel that? You know, why all day? Of course, we want all kids to learn. Of course, we want to provide the environment. But what are you doing? Like, what are you doing to create that? Is it is it a is it a mission statement that you put on a piece of paper or on a website and it just sits there? Is that the why? But then you don't ever come back to it and talk about what it actually looks like. You know, I mean, I was talking with a group of people yesterday. I said I had a I had a superintendent in, in my one of my first years that that it was his first year in the district. And he came into uh, the, the district, came into the uh, welcome back to school thing. And there's a, probably like a thousand people in the audience at that point. It was a bigger district. And he pulled out three dollars, three fifty dollar bills. And he said to the people in the audience, I will give this fifty dollar bill to anybody in this room that can recite the mission statement of the school district and what it means to mm -hmm. everybody in this room. And he just sat there. Nobody did it. I mean, he walked out with 150 bucks of his own money again because yeah. nobody knew it. Some people yeah. could trip over it, right? But then they didn't know what it meant. And that's where we get into the problem. The why is fantastic and it drives you at the same time. 
I want to know what I can do tomorrow. You mentioned that whole ma mantra of recognize, acknowledge, extend that we talked about earlier. And I don't mean to jump questions, but that's the what piece of the why. Because if I can put myself in the right mindset to recognize the greatness of the people around me, acknowledge the greatness of the people around me. So now I'm what? I'm in the what mentality of recognizing it, acknowledging it to that person that they're great. But here... The third thing, the third thing, when you extend the conversation to somebody who wasn't there to see the great things happening, it changes the conversation. If I walk down a second grade class, hallway and I see a second grade teacher doing great things and I walk into that second grade teacher's room to tell that second grade teacher that she's doing great things, I've recognized it. I've acknowledged it. That's the what. And that's fantastic. I've done it. Great. But what if you take it to a next level? What if you walk to the, the eighth grade science hallway and you tell the eighth grade science teacher about the great things happening in second grade? What inevitably happens is the eighth grade science teacher walks to the second grade classroom to tell the second grade teacher that she's doing great things. And the reason that he does it is because at some point somebody did it for him yep. and it felt good. And that's yep. the what. We want to feel good every day based on the mission of the why that we come to school every day. So what are we logistically doing every day to help people along the way so they don't forget why they do what they do? Man, powerful stuff. <laughs> what do we do to remind them so that they don't forget it? Because when they forget it, then they, they've essentially lost their way. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. they lost their way. Yes. So you, I, 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 I can't walk in my why because I've lost my way. And this yeah. thing that I used to be passionate about has now become my work. It's become my Correct. job. It becomes my means of income. So yep. we got we got we got to steer them back in that proper direction. You know, you, you, you talk about moving the needle and, yeah. and you say that, that, that we need to be clear in our intentions and the value of the various habit the habits that we engage people in. So, so to repeat that just for the audience, we need to be clear about our intentions and the value of the various habits that we engage in. I want you to elaborate on that yeah. in terms of just being clear on those intentions. Right. So the intentions really start with, if I can come back to that, because I will just tell you this, of all the things that we've done in our building, in the work that we've done, it, the recognize, acknowledge, extend has had the biggest impact on the culture because we put ourselves in a position where we're not the only ones seeing the great things. When you get to the extension piece of that, when you tell people that don't see the great work every day about the great work, that creates a momentum for everybody that gets a chance to then see more great work. And we try to extend it outside of the space, not just in the school. But again, if I tell the second grade teacher that she's doing great things and I acknowledge it, and then I tell the eighth grade teacher about the second grade teacher, the eighth grade teacher is going to tell the second grade teacher. But what if the eighth grade teacher told the kid or the spouse of the second grade teacher about the great things that happen in that space? Yeah. Now, yeah. the person that walks from home to school and doesn't always know their value, we've created a connection to the value between home and school. And we go home every day and we worry about other people's kids while we're sitting there with our own. And let's be honest about that. So if you don't create the connection from home to school, the next thing that you know, you're creating a place where people walk between two spots that they don't know where their value is. The reason that I start with that is because it comes down to the intention of the first part, the recognition of the great stuff. If you don't put yourself in the right mindset to see great things, you will not see great things. Think about how you start your day in a school. How do you start your day? Do you get to school to turn your computer on? Do you answer emails? Do you respond to emails? Do you sign forms? Do you go and then do you get into the hallway? Because when I did that, when I got to school and I turned my computer on, I'd get some seltzer water and I'd open email, respond to emails and sign some forms. I was already in the wrong mindset to see great things in the school because I don't know if it's like this there. But there aren't a ton of people emailing the superintendent of schools in Fall Creek, Wisconsin at six in the morning with great things to say about the school. Right. So all of a sudden I'm in the wrong mindset to see those great things. So what are you doing to start your day to put yourself in the right mindset to recognize the greatness? I still have to get to all that stuff. If I don't sign forms, people don't get paid. If I don't respond to emails, then people are going to wonder what I'm doing. But does that mean that I have to do it the second that I walk into the school? Or can I connect with people prior to that to put myself in the right mindset to see the great things? And that's what we do in terms of intention. How are we putting ourselves intentionally in the place to recognize the greatness that happens around us so you can actually talk about it and create value for that greatness. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, that, that's powerful stuff. It forces me to bring this out. 
And, yes. and, and, and folks that know me know that I go nowhere without this. I keep one right here at the desk, but I keep one in the bag. And wherever I go, this is one of the most, probably the most potent tool that I have in the toolkit because it's, it's, it stands for game film, self-reflection, mm-hmm. self-assessment, yep. self-adjustment, self-improvement. So, so with that said, let me holler at the audience just to reinforce what you said. What is it that you're doing, somebody out there, to ensure that you are walking into that building with the right mindset? Mm-hmm. To start the day off with the right mindset. What are you doing? Are you just walking in and, as, as Joe just said, just going right to email and doing all those administrative things? Or is there an intentionality relative to the attitude, the mindset that you bring into that school to commence the day. I might even say before you even walk into the school, right? Your mental preparation as you're driving into walking in, whatever it is to arrive to school, the way you woke up in the morning. So with that, let's, 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 let's go harder on that word. Intentionality, Mm -hmm. intentional intentionality. You know, Joe, um, I talk often about the intentionality of excellence Mm -hmm. and I used to use this word strive that many of us use. And some, somewhere along the way, I said, I need to delete strive from my vocabulary. I don't want to strive anymore. I just want to be. Hmm. So I started talking about the intentionality of excellence. And you think about the word intentionality, its root, intentional, its definition on purpose. So before I go to the question I wanted to give you, I want to give you this question, which I'm off script now. Um, is it possible to be excellent on purpose or do i have to strive to get there uh so i think that that comes down to like what the mentality is if you try to be your best self every single day then you're going to get better and if you're better tomorrow today are you better today than you were yesterday and tomorrow than you were today i think then I, you know, that's, I think you make a really good point. I got, I never really looked at it that way. Cause I think you're always in the moment. You're better in the moment by being in the moment. Right. Yeah. I think I, I tell people we were talking about, we're talking to aspiring superintendents. I said, the easiest way to not get your next job is to focus on your next job. Yeah. Right. right. Because if you're always like striving for the superintendency, then you then you're not good at what you're doing and you're never going to get that shot because people aren't going to are going to say that you're not good at what you're doing. So I think it the more that you can be in the moment, one of the things that we wrote in in, uh, hacking leadership, the first hack is be present and engaged. And that's the first hack for a reason. If you can't be present and engaged in the moment, you can't lead. So, yeah, I I think you're right. I think that's that's a really great way to, to, to talk about it, because. I guess uh, I don't. I never thought about that. If you're just kind of being in the moment, the next thing is you know, you'll be better the next day. It's great, great I thought. Want to be, and, and, yeah. it, and it doesn't take away from the growth. Right, right. But no, want, because you're yeah. you're invested in the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And I know that that's your your your. I know that's your terminology of being mm-hmm. present in the moment, which we we're right. going to talk about here too. So 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 you say that intentions about ensuring that 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 people have a purpose toward a goal yeah and 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 my question about that what what exactly are you saying when you say a purpose toward a goal and and give us an example particularly thinking about the ap's that are watching give us an example of what that might look like so when we talk about purpose towards a goal i think you know you you can we can talk about collective efficacy all you want and everybody needs to have collective efficacy and we want to make sure that we have collective efficacy if you don't have self-efficacy connected to what that collective piece is you start to wonder why you do what you do so from an ap perspective what is your role in the organization based on what you know what the purpose is in terms of moving people forward and what can you do really well in that moment to make sure that you're part of that collective efficacy moving forward. And and that's and again, it comes down to what can you control in that moment, right? And for me, I think about what is the logistical components of your day that puts you in a position to make sure that you're creating an opportunity and connecting to the overall purpose of the organization. So I think it's really a day-to-day operation connected to why we do what we do. Love it. You know, you you had mentioned earlier, and and I, I actually had it as a question, and I wanted to throw it at you. You say that when we help people to feel 
supported and valued, mm -hmm. there's nothing that they can't do, right? Before you even respond to that, let me, let me, I want to say it again for the audience. You're saying when, when we help people, so here we are in these leadership capacities, and when we help people to just feel supported, to feel valued, that there's nothing that they can't do. And, and, and I deem that to be a very powerful statement. So when, when you say that, what, what does that mean? Um, I'm thinking about I'm the teacher in the building and I don't feel supported. Mm -hmm. I don't feel valued. But then I got a principal or a superintendent, Dr. Joe Sanfilippo, who has an intentionality of helping me to feel supported and, and valued. Talk to us about that. How does that change me? Well, so I look at it from two perspectives. The one, the first one is, are we creating conversations that allow people to tell you whether or not they feel valued or don't feel valued? Mm. Because if they don't feel comfortable telling you that they feel valued or don't feel valued, then it's really hard to move people forward. The other thing is from the leadership perspective, what is the time that you spend and who you spend it with? What, what does that say about what you value? Meaning if, if I'm, if, if it's easy for me to talk to a FIED teacher because I have a connection about the Packers or I have a connection about whatever, or I have a connection about whatever, whatever it is, or I have kids in the same grade level or whatever, and I spend a lot of time with that person because I have common interests. What about the person over here? Who I have no, I have nothing in common with yet at the same time they're doing the incredible work down here. Am I putting myself in a position to create value for both of those people? Because it's easy on one side. It's difficult on the other because it's out of my own comfort zone. Don't let your own comfort zone preclude you from connecting with people who have a different interest. So take the step. I know that the people that will feel like they're the most valued by me are the people that I spend the most time with because I seek them out. If people don't feel valued, and I know this, if I walk into a space that I haven't been to in a while and I try to make a suggestion, they're going to look at me like, what are you talking about? You've never even been in here, right? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. I haven't seen you in weeks and you're going to tell me what to do. And I got to own that because that's on me for not being in the right spot with the right people at the right time. Yeah, and they're, and they're being brutally honest with you. By and I want you... them to be. I want yeah. that. I want that because that's the only way that we get better. So there's a, there's an assistant principal on the call right now in real time, and they're listening, and they're and and, and they're reflecting. I I, I would think, mm -hmm. and they're saying, "Am I making a teacher that I supervise feel valued, feel supported?" I know you just answered the question, which is comparable to this one, but I, I, mm -hmm. I just want to go deeper and specific with this assistant principal, right? Mm -hmm. okay. How does this AP who's inundated with whatever those responsibilities are, make that teacher that he or she supervises feel in a, on a sustained basis that yes, you are valued. Yes, you are supported. Yeah. Well, the first thing is, I think, you know, we talked about visibility doesn't create credibility, but it certainly helps it. Right. So being in the space and having, you know, just conversations that have nothing to do with instruction, conversations about family, conversations about this, the district, conversations about the community, conversations about the game, like, all you know, all this, we call them Seinfeld conversations. Right. Seinfeld was the show about nothing. Right. When you have conversations about nothing, then it's easier to have a conversation about something. So the more nothing conversations that you have, that creates the credibility for when you really have to have a tough conversation. And, you know, and, and for us, if we can lean into those, you know, um, non-scheduled moments, right, this, in the hallway, in the classroom that are not there, not, you're not, there's no reason for you to be in there. When you lean into those and just, you know, create authentic value for the person through conversation, then when you have to have a tough conversation, you're in a much better place. You know, someone asked a question and I, I, I want to turn it over to you to, to, to respond to it. The person, Will Turner, said, is there a difference between brutally honest and disrespectful? Oh, yeah, I think it's a, it's in the delivery. I really do. I think it's in the delivery. And a lot of times it, the disrespect comes in 
when you don't have a relationship with that person because there's a gap in terms you could say the exact same thing to two different people if you have a relationship built up with them because you've had these no nothing conversations with them versus people that you could say the exact same thing to somebody that you haven't seen a lot and the reaction is going to be completely different because they know who you are and you know who they are i think the disrespect comes in the gap the knowing gap right do i know you do you know me and then you can default to disrespect because you didn't respect them enough to know them before you had the tough conversation. I love, you know, I, I absolutely love what you just said. Mm -hmm. and, and and you and I as presenters, the same thing applies. We can be with an audience and there's something that we could say that would generate laughter. We mm -hmm. say the same exact thing in another location with an audience that doesn't know us that way. And yeah. now you got folks mad at you. Right. So, so 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 we so we got to know the room. Right. Yeah. We got we, we, we got to understand the dynamics of the room so that we understand how the words that we choose, which may be the same ones in a different city, may be perceived very differently. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, a, and it's different. It's different groups, too. Right. Because I could tell I could tell a joke or do have a conversation with a group of teachers or, or principals. And then I go and have the same conversation with a group of superintendents in the same area. Nope. Yeah. Not at all. Not, not, not playing Joe. That's not good. Don't worry about it. Like, it's just to know the people that you speak to. And it, it goes back to in the building too. know who you are responsible for. And what do you know about them? Can you name three, three things about every person that you supervise? Can you name three things that maybe other people don't know, or that you just know about them? If it's a family thing, if it's what they like to do in college, if it's like, you know, um, if it's a, a, a an interest that they have outside of school, you know, that kind of thing. We did we did this thing where we asked our staff members, tell us, you know, one interesting fact about you. And then we'll try to guess who the person was. Right. And so one of the interesting facts was, you know, that this person scored uh, 32 points in a high school basketball game. Not one person, not one person guessed the kindergarten, the female kindergarten teacher. Not one. Hmm. Right. But guess who it was? Female kindergarten teacher who was just wow. dropping buckets for 32 in a high school game back when she was in high school. Wow. Like those are things that we can do. Like just think about how do we put ourselves out there to make sure that we know and understand what, what happens with people. Just know people. The more that you know, it sounds so simplistic, but it's also the hardest thing to do because of everything that goes on during the day. Yeah. that's, that's She's a kindergarten teacher and, <laughs> and, and people couldn't, couldn't transfer that too. But, no. but she was a basketball star back in the day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. You know, Joe, um, thinking about going back to that AP, what might the consequences be to a school of that, of that, forget AP or principal leadership. Okay. What 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 might the consequences be to that school where that that support and that letting folks know that they are valued is lax, that it, it or even non-existent? What happens to a school relative to the school's culture there? Uh, the, a couple things happen. The first thing that happens is that you create a divide between groups. And the more divides that you have between groups, the harder it is to move anybody forward. And what I would say to superintendents that put themselves, that put their leaders in that position is if you're, if you put people in that position, you're going to answer a ton of questions that you shouldn't have to answer because you're not allowing them to lead the way that they want to lead. And we try to make sure that our people are empowered as much as they can. But I also don't want them asking me nine questions about things that they could do on their own. And mm -hmm. if they don't feel like they're valued and they don't feel like you trust them, then they're going to keep coming back at you with questions. And let's be honest, everybody's busy. And if you can eliminate that piece because you trust them, now all of a sudden you put yourself in a better position to move forward. And so that's the first thing. The second thing, the, the second divide is from the people that they supervise to the, to the people that are uh, from the people that they supervise to the supervisor. So think about it this way. What if you could create a connection from an administrative team to the staff in terms of the recognize, acknowledge, extend model that we talked about earlier? What if in a staff meeting, you have one staff member share one, in, in, I'm sorry, in an administrative team meeting, you have the five, six, seven, 10 administrators there. Let's say you have 10 administrators in the, in the room at that particular moment. And one administrator tells a story about somebody in their school district that's do, or in their school that's doing great things. And there, you can see the joy in their eyes in that moment, right? What if the other nine administrators at that table made a commitment 
to reach out to the person that was being talked about to not only let them know that they were being talked about by the by their supervisor, but also let them know that they were being talked about in an administrative team meeting. Because mm-hmm. there are a lot of people that think that all we do is go to meetings and we have to have meetings. But if you can change the perception of meeting, you change the culture of what of, of what that looks like moving forward. So yeah. just doing that, just taking we're going to celebrate one person and then everybody at this administrative table is going to reach out to that one person and let them know that they were great because their administrator told a great story about them at the administrative team meeting. That's how we change the conversation. And that and, and, and it's logistic. That's the what. Yeah. That's the what, right? What? Yeah. And that lifts people up. Yeah, I tell yeah. people all the time a good word is going to go much further than than a, 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 a appreciation luncheon. Yeah. Right? That, that luncheon may feel good in the moment. But that word from somebody, that support, that me feeling valued, that could last a whole school year. If hey, not, man, I'm telling you, I agree. Pizza parties don't build culture, they feed people. That's what yeah. happens. They feed people. That's great. Yeah. That's but it. come on, right? There's always something else. That conversation has a, such an impact. Such an impact. Yep. You know, you talk about the, as I said before, the, the recognize, acknowledge, extend. I want to read a quote from the book. You, you indicated that if we recognize the work of colleagues, acknowledge to them that the work is great and extend the conversation about their work to someone who wasn't there, we help and add value to the work and they'll want to do it more. Right. So, again, we help and add value to the work and they'll want to do it more. So so the question then always considering who's watching this platform, Mm -hmm. primarily the assistant principal, how do we go about making recognize, acknowledge and extend habitual for that AP, a part of their repertoire when they feel I'm so overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. How do I make this a part of who I am and what I do? Yeah, I'm just going to tell you, do it once a day for five days and then come back and ask me the question. Because if you can recognize that we talk about the impact of 30 second moments every 30 seconds, there's 960 30 second opportunities in an eight hour day. I'm asking you to take two of them. Take one 30 second opportunity and tell a teacher that they're great because you've recognized it, acknowledged it. Take another 30 second opportunity and tell somebody in their world how great they are. That's 60 seconds. Okay. That's two of those 960 opportunities in an eight hour day. Two. Think about it. I mean, you people will, people will, they say, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. And then they scroll through Instagram for seven to 10 minutes while they're waiting for something. Yeah. Right. It's not about the time. It's what you do with the time every time, right? Here, here's, an, here's, a, here's an example. So w- I do this thing every time. Every time that I've spoken to a group of people from 2014 on, I do this thing every single time. I have them try to stand face-to-face, nose-to-nose, and try to stare into each other's eyes for 30 seconds, okay? And none of them can do it. And then I tell them to take 30 seconds and text somebody that they care about, Okay. That, and do that in 30 seconds. Those are two 30-second differences. I did this with my staff in 2016, staring at the eyes activity. They hated it. 2017, it was 2016. It was the welcome back to school thing, okay? Welcome back to school. 2017, we're back in the auditorium for the welcome back to school day. And I told them, stand up, stand face-to-face, stand two inches from each other's nose and stare into each other's eyes. They lost their mind. They're like, come on. We yeah. did this last year. What did you forget? Like, yeah. what's going on, right? And I said, I'm not going to make you do it, but I want you to understand something. We did this activity 365 days ago, and it lasted 30 seconds. And you all just had an emotional reaction to something that happened 365 days ago that lasted 30 seconds. Don't you tell me that you can't change culture in 30 seconds when you just had an emotional reaction to something that happened a year ago that lasted 30 seconds. Give yourself five days. With one minute out of those five days, acknowledge, recognize, acknowledge it, extend it five days straight. You're going to feel better. They're going to feel better. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to tell five people that you did it. And and they're going to tell you at the second staff meeting. You know, you have the staff meeting, but then you know there's the second staff meeting. The staff meeting that happens in the hallways, the classrooms, the parking lot, or online. And at that second staff meeting, that's when you're going to know because they're going to tell the story about you calling somebody outside of this world, outside of their world, to tell you to tell them that that you're good at your job. Five days. Do it for five days. Five days. 
you know, th that, that scenario that you just gave about the staff meeting where you had the staff standing four, four inches from one another yeah. in noses. Yeah. I, I, I read that in the book and I, and I, and I, I tried to imagine what that would be for me. Mm -hmm. And you know something that would be torture unless <laughs> that person on the other side is my wife, yeah. right? To stand there. I would have that same emotional reaction. So, right. so if a year later you had to say we're going to revisit that, I would have probably been the guy in the room that says again, <laughs> right? Because, because, so you so, may have left. <laughs> I may have walked out <laughs> because that's that's brutal. And, I know, but but the whole point you're making is so valid, mm -hmm. right? In in terms of the reaction to it versus what one can do in the same space of time. Because yeah. that standing, I, I know standing there with a colleague would seem like forever. I know. So, so, it is. so what a point you made, and, and, and I'm reinforcing it just so the audience can hear that, that 30 seconds is a long time that you have that you could make someone feel better about themselves. Right. So let me, let me look at it a different way then, Joe. Okay. Um, think about that, that leader, AP or principal or whomever, who... That's just not a part of part of their repertoire. It's not what they do. And then they 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 logged on today, October 15, and listened to Dr. Joe Sanfilippo and a light bulb went off. And I need to be that leader. Mm -hmm. I go back to my school and I now I am acknowledging, I am recognizing, I am extending, but it's not coming across as being authentic because that's not who I've been. Okay. So now folks are seeing me as being inauthentic, seeing me as being phony. How do you respond to that? And how do you ensure that I can come across as being authentic in my recognition of staff? That is, that's a, that's about as good a question as you're going to get, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> uh, because, because think about it. If you want to change, you talked, we talked about striving for excellence right and we talk about being excellent in the yeah. moment i think if we spend so much time worrying about the response we're never gonna move forward with it yeah. so my advice to that person would be like yeah okay guess what they may not feel like it's authentic right away but how are they gonna feel in two weeks how are they gonna feel in three weeks how are they gonna feel in a month when you continue to do it right if it's the only time that you do it it's 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 not going to feel authentic. But then if you're going to if, if they're going to say that, if they're going to be upset about that, then let's talk about it this way. You at the beginning of the year, everybody says how great the custodians are, how great the bus drivers are, how great how the school looks fantastic, how everything's good to go. And we recognize that. And then we don't talk about it again until their week of recognition throughout the course of the year. Right. Yeah. So yeah. let's pull it back, man. Let's pull it back and say anything is better than that. So let's start there. And to be really honest, start in a space that you know you're going to get some momentum, right? If you have had a really difficult relationship with a, with a particular person that you supervise, I would not advise that you go there right away and start building that momentum. I'd go to somebody that you have a pretty good relationship. Doesn't need to be a great relationship, but somebody that you have one with. And then, because then that story gets told. And then when it comes along to the person that you're really struggling with, because you because now you're in there more and you're having more conversations and now you can recognize it. So like you, you go there every day for the week and you just see them in the classroom. Then the next week, you're like, you know, I've been in here for six days in a row. And every day that I'm in here, I see you make one connection with a kid that I didn't see the day before. Mm-hmm. I just think that's neat. I just wanted to say thank you for that because that was cool for me to see. Now you're putting it back on yourself. I was really great for me. I liked seeing that. Thank you for thank you for sharing that because that was really great. And then just go on with your day. But now you can equate it to the fact that you've been in there for six days in a row and tell them that you were. You know, I've been in here for six days in a row look, for a couple minutes. And this is what I've seen. And this is what I saw today that reminded me of the last five days. And I just wanted to say thank you for that. I... That's all I got. I just want to say thank you for that. That was really cool for me to see that. I'm, I'll, I'll check with you later. And then walk out, right? It doesn't need to be some big production. Like, you don't need to get the band and have them walk into the classroom and celebrate them. Just have a good conversation. Yeah. Just be just be genuine. 
Yeah, you absolutely. And interacting with people. Be because be they'll know. Could be. Right? They'll know. Yeah. I told I tell new leaders as they start, like a couple of things that they need to, to know. First thing I tell them is like, you don't know everything. And guess what? They know you don't know everything. Uh -huh. And if you pretend to know everything, they're gonna crush you. Yeah. It's okay that you don't know everything. Right. That's all right. And it's even better to let them know you don't know. But I'm <laughs> absolutely, I agree I'll with find that. Out. I'm gonna come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Joe. Um, and, and folks, it's twelve o'clock, twelve o nine Eastern time. Hit that share button. Hit the retweet button. I got a couple more, man. We ain't going all day. Um, <laughs> Joe, good because uh, we got again. We got I got twenty two percent left on my battery. We're good for a little bit. Oh, yeah, oh, we're yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll let yeah. you know when we get too tight. No, right. I was interviewing Robin Jackson not too long ago, and I, I forgot oh. to plug in. And I said to her, I said, uh oh, I said, my battery's dying, man. <laughs> but we got, we got, we got through it. But, um, right. you know, Joe, you know, our, our experiences and our realities shape and inform yeah. how we, how, how, how we perceive and interpret just various different stimuli. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about, our topic today, intentionality uh, in school culture, et cetera. And school culture means so many different things to so many different people. I want, I want to ask you, what is school culture, your short answer, what does school culture mean to you? But more so within that, how do we build a culture of intentionality yeah. yes. within a school? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I love that question. I love it. And the reason that I love it is because we both go into schools and we both, you, and you know this as well as I do, you can tell the culture of that building the second you walk in and the hallway yeah. you walk down, you walk down one hallway and there's the minute, the second that you see adults interacting, you know what that place is all about, yeah. right? So let's be really clear. We front load that. We front load that who are in our offices, who's around the front door, who's in those hallways that know when people walk in, they're going to get a great experience because I want them to see a great experience right away. So when we build in, we're talking about building culture with intentionality. I don't mean to sound like a broken record, man, but the thing that we've done and it's, it's a, we collectively me, the people that, that I get a chance to lead do this better than any group I've ever been around. They recognize the greatness of their colleagues, acknowledge it, and extend it on a daily basis. The number of times that people in our – we have a building where we have teachers, but we also have a lot of kids in school that have uh, parents that are, that are teaching in the building. The number of times that I see a teacher doing a great thing, and then I can go find their junior and high school son – or their sixth grade daughter and let them know how great mom is at what they do. I'm going to do it. And mm. that's not just this guy with the bald head, man. That is not just me. They do it all the time. Like every it's, it's almost like every chance they get. And it just has created this and it's different. You know, I mean, we have three different buildings. It's at a different level at all three buildings, but you can tell, you can tell what building is having a good week by how much interaction is going on. And if you can just do that with each other, that whole model of connecting with each other and how, think about this. Think about what happens in schools. In schools, how often does somebody go next door and have a conversation with a teacher about a, a, with a colleague, right, about something logistical or a schedule change or something that they're going to complain about versus how often do they go next door and say, I just taught this really great lesson. Yeah, it was awesome, yeah. and the kids were amazing. And I can the reason that they don't do it is they're afraid of the response. Not that the response is going to be, Oh, that's dumb, I don't even think that's very cool, or whatever. The response could be, Oh, that's really neat. But did you see what we have to do next week? Did you mm -hmm. see all the stuff that we've got going on next week? Right? Yeah. And I think the other thing that happens is a lot of the best ideas in schools die before they exit the classroom walls because you're afraid of what your colleague is going to say. You got this great idea and you can't wait about to talk about this great idea. And then you go next door to talk about to the colleague about this great idea. And the, and the colleague next door is like, don't do that. Because yeah. if you do that, then I'm going to have to do that. I don't want to do that. So don't do that. So yeah. then one of two things happens. The person goes next door and they do it and they don't tell anybody about it or they don't do it because they're afraid of what their colleague is going to say. And the reason their colleague is, that says it isn't because they don't want to do it. It's because they feel like they're always cycling because they weren't val nobody valued the work that they're currently doing. So help people value the work that they're currently doing by making sure that you can walk next door and say, 
I just taught a really great lesson. It was awesome. I just wanted to tell somebody about it. That's all. I'll see you later. What do you got for lunch? You know, that kind of stuff, man. Yeah. Get yeah. in place. You lot just said it. It's a safe place. Having a safe place that's is crucial. It's that it doesn't mean that it's always perfect. We talk about, I'm telling you, that whole thing about, you know, telling the eighth grade science teacher, telling the second grade teacher that she's great at her work, which actually happened, right? And the reason that he does it is because somebody did it for him. It makes them walk into work and feel good about the work. I'm not even talking about great. You don't have, you can't get to great if you don't feel good every day. Yeah. So feel good every day with the possibility of great, right? Go. If you walk in every day and you feel good about the work, you have a better chance of feeling great about the work. If you walk in and you don't feel good about the work, do you have any chance of feeling great about the work? No, no. So what can we do to help? And that's the every interaction mentality. Wow. Wow. And, you know, I, I kept Yolanda, you just uh, referenced her. I kept her up there because she also asked, why, why were you in the car? And I already know you, you're camping. So he yeah. has. No, don't you say that. Uh, I'm not camping. I, don't camp. I will never. I don't camp. I don't <laughs> camp. We got a cabin, but there's no reception. So it's, it's funny that you asked that because I feel I was talking with a group before. I said, I'm literally in a van. And there's a river right here. I'm not joking. There's a river right by me. So I'm essentially doing a motivational talk from a van down by the river. Let's down be honest the... about what's actually happening here, man. <laughs> down by the river. Yeah. I'm, all... <laughs> I'm almost done. I need to preserve that battery. Listen, yeah, Joe, um, I know a lot of folks that watch this video, this, this platform, and they're, they're folks in here, they, they want to be instructional leaders. Their supervising staff, their assistant principals, or even principals, they want to be those instructional leaders. They want to be those instructional coaches. They want to be able to shine within that capacity. But the circumstances, the culture of the building, the principal not understanding how to use an AP, et cetera, inhibit that person from being that instructional leader, that instructional coach, that one that's shining within their leadership, it prevents it from happening. So my, my, my question is, how does, you know, thinking about this whole idea of intentionality, how can this person create an intentionality of being an, an, a true instructional leader, which, you know, we think about the reason that the youngsters are in school is to learn, but if yeah. I'm not able to, 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 to supervise, and to assist a teacher with growing pedagogically, I can't play that role, then it's not going to happen because of me. It could happen outside. So how do I, how do I create this intentionality of, 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 of instructional leadership within my school environment? So it, the first place that we were talking about when you don't, when they don't feel like the culture is allowing you to do that. Again, we go back to control what you can control. Be so good at what you do that you can't be ignored. Whatever they've tasked you to do, be so good at it that you can't be ignored. Because even if that's not the right space for you based on the culture that's there, if you're so good at the work that you do that you can't be ignored, another opportunity will come up. It just will. And we are in an environment where those things are coming up faster than we hope, to be really honest. Let's be, let's be honest. I principal openings come up, AP openings come up more than they should because people are moving on to the next thing and, uh, and, and people are just getting out of the profession because it's really hard to lead, but you're going to get the opportunity if you're so good that you can't be ignored. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, I talk about it from school boards. When I talk to superintendents and I talk about how to build relations with their school board, the thing that I tell them is how can you make the school board look so good? How can you make them look so good? that they can't deny what you just did to help them look so good. Mm -hmm. So think about it. How are we making each other look good in the moment? How are you making your teachers that you supervise look really good? How are you making the principal that you work with look really good? How are you making the kids look good? That gives some momentum. And the reason that I say that first is because when you get momentum, you can get deeper into the instructional components of what you want to do. But you can't if you don't have any credibility, it makes it really hard to be in that spot. So creating momentum gives you, um, like, I think about it, in the first three years that I was a, a principal, I was not a great principal at all. I'm not a great, I didn't know a lot. 
but I made people feel like they wanted to be there. And it gave me a little bit of a honeymoon. And in that honeymoon, now we can dive into instruction because we've got a little bit of social capital in that spot. So the more that we can build in that spot, the better chance you're going to have moving forward. And I would just say, what are you doing to help the people? A, first of all, be great. Be so great that you can't be ignored. And what are you doing to amplify the voices of those around you? Because that creates momentum. And when you create momentum, you can dive deeper into things that we should be there for, but aren't always there for because people don't see the instructional piece of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I got one more for you. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and then we go to those impact questions real quick. Sure. Those are quick. What would you um, what would you say to a principal that's watching right now about ensuring that they are creating synergy between themselves and the assistant principal or principals that are on their team. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So I'm going to look at it from this perspective. I'm the superintendent. I supervise three principals and a director. Okay. That's, that's my, that's my group. We are at our best when we meet consistently, have a common voice and move forward together. We are at our worst when I, 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 this is a Joe thing. When I don't coordinate that to the point that people are asking questions and when they go out and when people ask them a question about what's going on and they don't like the answer that they got from that principal and they go to another principal and ask them the same question, they're not even asking for the answer that they want. They're asking for a disconnect. They're seeing if there's a disconnect because if there's a disconnect in the two answers, then they can go back and talk about, well, they're not even connected. They're, not, they're just talking about two different things. Mm -hmm. That's my job. That's my fault as the superintendent in that space. So what are we doing to create synergy with our team? And if we create synergy with our team that we're all on the same page by meeting consistently and having outcomes that we all move forward with, it puts ourselves in the right spot. The second thing is, are we as a group, as a group of administrators, are we creating momentum for each other? That example that I told you about a one, one principal sharing a story about somebody in their school that's doing great things. When we make a commitment to celebrate that staff member that's doing great things, it also celebrates the administrator in the room and creates momentum for the administrator in the room. And if we want synergy, if we want a chance to connect and grow together, we've got to feel like we're all together. We are at our best when we're all on the same page. We're at our worst when we're not, and that's my fault. If it doesn't happen, it's my fault, and I have to own it. That doesn't mean I can't fix it, but I have to own it and say, I haven't created enough opportunity to sit, talk, reflect, follow up, and go, and honestly, and to laugh. Because you need that room to laugh. You need that room to connect where it's not just complaints about things that are going on. So I would say find ways to amplify the voices of those people around you because then it models what you want that AP to do. In my case, the principal, what I want that principal to do when they go supervise their group. I love it. And, and, and you know, the main thing that resonated with me, <clears throat> excuse me, is um, you said you got to own it. Yeah, I do. You know, you you 100%. you in the leadership capacity. So that principal out there, you gotta own that. If that yeah, if that AP is supervising X number of teachers, but that but that AP is not permitted to be that instructional leader because you've got this person bogged down in discipline and all these other things, and 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 being a coach, visiting classrooms is is a virtual impossibility. You gotta own that. And we gotta Absolutely. restructure the way we go about leading. I love yeah. it. I love it. Let's go to these bam impact questions yeah, that I want. Man. Tell them how to get in touch with you. Uh, 21 quick questions, one word answer or one sentence. But if you okay. go over a sentence, then I got to cut you off, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Is education on the right path for underserved children? No. Is true equity, can true equity occur in America's schools for black, brown, and other underserved students? Yes. Does Dr. Joe Sanfilippo's work contribute to the progress we desperately need? I hope so. If you could do a reset on your life, would your line of work be different or the same? Same. Why do you continue to do this work? I love kids and I love the look in teachers' eyes. What fires you up within the work that you do? Kids' reaction to something that they didn't think they could do and the same with the adults. What do you love about... I'm sorry, I said that one. Um, what do you dislike about the work that you do? The minutiae and the politics. Everybody's answer. 
what has been your greatest victory in this work? That there are less people that don't know Fall Creek, Wisconsin, and the home of the crickets than there are that do. What was your greatest mistake in this work? Thinking that I knew everything. What has been your greatest challenge in this work? Knowing that I don't know everything. Are you proud of your first year as an assistant principal? Uh, my first year, I, it was, am I proud? Yes, because we amplified voices. No, because I was awful. Are you proud of your first year as a principal? Yeah, same answer. Yep, same answer. Who inspires you in the work that you do? Ugh, my family. What are you reading right now? Book, blog, article, anything? Uh, the best book that I've read, I, I, and I reviewed it, was The Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heath. What book would you recommend to our viewers this afternoon? Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heath. What do you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? I want everywhere that I go, anywhere across the country, for when I say that I'm from Fall Creek, Wisconsin, I want them to yell, go crickets. Are you satisfied with where you are professionally now? I don't think I'll ever be satisfied. No. What would you say to a viewer out there who continues to face closed doors? If you walk down a hallway a little farther, there'll be one that you can open. What could you say to a viewer out there who's lost their fire? Spend five minutes with your purpose, whatever that is. If it's kids, if it's teachers, spend five minutes with your purpose and you'll feel better. If Dr. Joe Sanfilippo was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? He's just really loud. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that was different. I love it. Great stuff. Great stuff. Hey, folks, um, if you love the interview today, if it was <laughs> beneficial for you, if Dr. Sam Filippo, Filippo gave you some great information, hit them up. Hit, put them fire flames. Hit them hearts. Hit them. I appreciate hit, it. Put all this stuff. <laughs> Give it to me in the comments section. I see it coming. Give me them bombs. Give me whatever your uh, favorite emojis are. Yeah. But give them some go crickets. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see yeah, the go yeah. crickets in there. Go crickets, man. Let them know. Let them know. That's the way we applaud in this yeah, new world, this new virtual world, man. Just let them know. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. So I'm going to wow. reinforce it, Joe. Like like what you did was you 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 hit it out the park, man. <laughs> Grand, My bam, God. Bam. <laughs> Hit it out the park. Good stuff, man. Oh, man. I loved, it. I loved it. Great stuff. Let them know how they can reach you, how they can get your books, how they can book you, all that good yeah. stuff. If you Thank you so much, everybody. I I mean, the best way to get a hold of me is probably just find me on Twitter at Joe underscore Sanfilippo or jsanfilippo.com is the website. You can get a hold of me there. And one of the things that I think is really important for people is, is you know, at the end of all these one-minute walk-to-work videos, I always say we're all in this thing together. We're all in this thing together doesn't mean we're all in this thing together when it's convenient to be all in this thing together. If you need something, please reach out. Please let me know. I mean, if it's just a conversation, if it's something to help with a, with a group of people, I am always willing to be part of that conversation. We've got incredible people in Fall Creek, Wisconsin. We've got great things going on. And, it, and I'm just super loud about it. And that's really it, man. If we can help out, we're going to help out. And uh, And I couldn't. I had so much fun. That was such an incredible time. Thank you so much for the platform. Honestly, this was, I could have done this for another hour. I mean, I couldn't because my computer, but at the same time, it would have been, uh, I just, I love talking to you. I can't wait till we're in the same spot. I really can't. I mean, I, we just, let's make sure that we connect offline to figure out where we're going to be probably this summer and just get a day, just a day to hang out. I can't wait. That's right. And and, and 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 let me add this one more piece to the to the one minute walk. The, the, the one part you didn't mention, which which I just I don't know what it is that I just like when you say it. You say that's all I got. Right. Every time that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 we gotta I'm take care like of each that. other. That's, that's all the same together, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I do, I do, yeah, yeah that's right. Every time. <laughs> Good stuff. Hey everybody. Appreciate you being here, Joe. Stay with me. I hope for your battery so I can close I out and then so we can yep, talk offline. 
But everybody, thanks for being here. Another great session. Had Joe on here dropping those nuggets all hour, all 90 minutes. So thanks for being here. Let me let, give you the quick rundown and I'm going to let you go. Next week, I'm going to be live in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Man, that, yeah. I'm paying $300 for a dedicated line. So I better be clear on this screen. They're charging me $300. <laughs> now, someone might be saying, you're going to pay an extra three so you could do the virtual AP Leadership Academy on your birthday? Because next yes. Saturday is my birthday. Yep, I'm paid. Yeah. I already paid it $300 so that I can come on here live next Saturday from Montego Bay, Jamaica on my 62nd birthday. So if I'm going to be on there, you better be on there with yes. me. Yes. I'll be on at 1055 next Saturday. My guest, oh my God, three assistant principals. Remember two weeks ago, I had three or two uh, princi new principals. This is three assistants, one of them, Dakeisha Williams from North Carolina, her first year as an assistant principal. By Rianne Collins out there in uh, Louisiana and New Orleans. And, you know, she went through the hurricanes and all that stuff. She'll be with us. And my man, Demetrius Scott, down there in Alabama. We got all three of them, man. On my birthday, $300 strong. We're going to be talking about assistant principal leadership. Come celebrate my 62nd with me. Uh, make sure that on Facebook Live every Saturday morning, Principal Sean Hurt, 10 o'clock. Create and educate with Dr. Sheikha Houston and Dr. Tammy Taylor. Yes. It ain't Dr. no Tammy more, Taylor. It ain't no more loading, as as Sheikha says. It's no more soon to be. It's Dr. Tammy Taylor. That's ten thirty on Saturdays, and then unlock the middle with Josh Tovar and Dean Packard on Sunday nights at seven o'clock Eastern time. Make sure you get your hands on the two books that accompany this platform the assistant principal 50 the aspiring principal 50 go to amazon right now knock it out get it out the way visit me on principalcafele.com for all the resources subscribe to the virtual ap leadership academy youtube channel follow the virtual ap leadership academy facebook page because the commentary is part b every saturday every sunday so not later than 10 o'clock the commentary will be up so make sure that you um like and follow that page or you can't read it because I don't post it anywhere else and then make sure you're taking care of yourself your diet your exercise routine or regimen and whatever your your your, um, your your COVID monkey pox and whatever other diseases are out here precautions whatever they are take care of you right that's important so other than that folks I appreciate you being here see you next Saturday at 1055 other than that have a great week have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Go Peace. Crickets. Go crickets. Thumbs up. <laughs> Cock that fist back. One, two, three. Bam. Go crickets.